All right, we're going. Oh, hey. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict Show. So excited to be with you. We got an interesting topic today to cover. What are we talking about? All right. So this is something that I actually cannot figure yeah. out why people are not screaming from the rooftops that this is happening. Do you know why they're not screaming? Because yeah, they don't know. <laughs> Absolutely, because they don't know. Yeah. So a couple of news outlets have covered this, but the fact is that Zelensky in Ukraine held a, a defense industries forum, basically bringing in defense contractors, defense, uh, basically the military industrial complex, the biggest military, uh, the, the biggest military entities from across the world came in and basically had a conference, uh, as to how to continuously arm Ukraine, even when governments have sort of stopped directly funding them. So, yeah. uh, so that's what we're going to be covering. Jeez. I, I, I know, I know because a lot of, Oh my God. So, uh just before we get in into the, the depth of all this because there will be just a basic conversation here to understand where things are headed because there are certain information that the uh, mainstream media is not going to cover okay this is what we're going to be talking about also on a rumble right after this yes we're going to be talking about a, a key topic uh that they are just overlooking over all this so anyway uh before we delve deeper, make sure please to subscribe to the channel if you are new here or first time. And also uh, make sure to sign up for the free copy of my book, the Saudi book. And here is the link yep. on the screen there. Geopoliticsinconflict.com slash Saud. So it's... Uh, I forgot what I was oh. saying. <laughs> well, you're probably talking about the book and, you know, David has written a bunch of books, guys. I don't know if you know that or not. And this one is one that we are giving you guys for free because it is, uh, we would rather you guys have the information than not. So if you want, it's completely free, geopoliticsinconflict.com slash Saud. Yeah. And also sign up for the newsletter so you can receive an updates about what's going on. So. Anyway, let's let's get in into this topic here as to what happened now that Kiev Jeez. you know it's yeah. it's nobody it's not nobody so kind of nobody knew about it. I mean we didn't think about it, but it also it gives you an idea as to why Biden is pushing for more of this. Right. Uh, here is the here is here is what's at the heart of it, but also you don't think of it just on that aspect. You have to think about it within the context of other events taking place, especially when it comes down to armaments. Mm -hmm. What am I referring to here? I am referring to the current naval exercises that's taking place between Philippines, the U.S., and other allies in Asia. I am talking about also the armaments for Australia that just agreed now uh, mm -hmm. its government for the allow a British company to go ahead and build the submarine, so which is BAE, if I'm not mistaken. This is what I meant by, I am also talking mm -hmm. about how NATO now is saying, oh no, we are not going to agree to what Russia is asking for. So you can just imagine now how this is going to now change the dynamics for Russia if you start having <laughs> the manufacture of weapons next door. Oh my! Like yeah. what? To me, uh, what a what what an irresponsible thing to be doing. Because it's one thing to have weapons sent to Ukraine; it's another yeah. thing to have weapons manufactured in Ukraine. Now, uh, on the thumbnail, I said clever Zelensky, and I think this is very clever for him because the support for the Ukraine conflict yeah. right now is waning across the world. Even if you look at, so so in the last bill that mm -hmm. just went through Congress, mm -hmm. there was $24 billion earmarked for Ukraine. Well, one of the ways that they could, one of the only ways that they could get that through is if they got rid of the funding for Ukraine. People yeah. are getting absolutely fatigued with this situation. Yeah. It's been almost two years. T people have been paying and the people are tired of it. Yeah. And Even this is why the Speaker of the House has been ousted. You know, right. that's the first time in American history. 
which to me all of them are corrupted anyway right so you just replace another one with another corrupted right. of officials but that's not the point the point is this this push for you know yeah i will agree with you to a degree about mm -hmm. the con the, the the word you used for on the thumbnail as far as clever yeah but it's not his idea of course that, yeah, of course so of course uh, so the, the 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 thinking will have to be really uh, if you consider what a uh the commander of of nato's naval uh, I forgot his name. It's, uh, it's I couldn't remember. Anyway, what he said, and I mm -hmm. paraphrase here. Oh, we've been working on this since 2008. Yeah. So the same arguments could be made about the the military buildup in Kiev. So of yeah. course they had to use Zelensky, mm -hmm. comedian President Zelensky, yeah. to say that one. Now the danger of that. Oh my God. This is huge. where the big concern, because here's the thing. Manufacturing ammo. Is different than manufacturing missiles right and i don't think so russia is gonna tolerate that one way or another oh no I i'm don't. almost I like imagine. start to think in terms of maybe russia needs to use the hammer yeah because sometimes that's how you make someone understand right the only concern with that is the consequences of it and i think the consequences are, are fairly severe i i that's why I said I think that this is actually very irresponsible. Yeah. So there's a, there's a video circulating um, that I think is actually very funny. And I sent it to, to you and one of our other producers. I sent it to you guys this morning. We'll show it on Rumble if you guys want to get on with us afterwards yeah, on we Rumble. Can show that here. Yeah. yeah. But you're, we can we can show it on Rumble. <laughs> yeah. You all know why. So we don't need to be the dead horse on this. But we're going to be covering part of it on, on Rumble right after yes. this one here. So make sure you guys join us for that. So. Yeah, this is where the concern it's going to be. Now Absolutely. you get the military industrial, including BlackRock, which, you know, right. for the, you know, the whole scenario with Ukraine, it was, well, here is what you do. You create the problem, right? You pretend you're solving it while you're profiteering from it yeah. at the expense of Americans. Well, uh, yeah. let's not just blame the government by itself. Some of us are to blame also because we are almost like watching and taking it without Oh, oh, whatever. It doesn't touch me. This is where part of the problem is. Yeah. So I blame American citizens also for being this oblivious. Right. It just, I don't know what to, how to express the word beyond brainwashed. Uh, brainwashed I don't is know a good what, one. Yeah. Voluntarily brainwashed. I'm actually going to put that out there too. Yeah. So, you know, this information has been out there from the beginning. So yeah. part of the, one of the videos that we've actually shown on Rumble before yeah. is Jen Stoltenberg talking about the reasons why, or the reason, right? Yeah. He, he said, and, and we'll show this on Rumble later. Yeah. Um, but it basically, he, he basically says uh, Putin sent us a treaty that said we don't want NATO to expand closer to our borders. Yeah. And he was like, well, we just didn't sign it. And, and he was like, well, Russia didn't want more NATO countries next to its borders. Yeah. And we gave him that. We gave him yeah. NATO right next to his borders. And, and he, I mean, he straight up says it. He yeah, straight he's, up says he's it. Been, he's been aiming at staying at that position because remember mm -hmm. any secretary of nato throughout the history uh, and always nato secretary has been a european yeah that's the norm the standard for it the commander of the forces in nato is always a u.s four-star general yeah so that's how it's always been from wesley clark to Brad love to uh those are the last ones i remember uh so the idea of for him to be pushing the narrative what it was always about that yeah because they wanted to expand this well you all know this reality by now guys the fact that for us as citizens yeah allowing the massive spending yeah. as a matter of fact for the spending in nato we bear almost 70 percent of its budget right then now you add in ukraine with what this idiot biden is doing mm. yeah i call him idiot i don't care what he's doing yeah because he doesn't know at the same time, it, whomever pushing this agenda from behind mm -hmm. find it convenient to have him yeah. at the helm of power because oh, he right. doesn't know. He just right. signed whatever. So now when you move into this level of having 
the production of weapons near Russia, oh my God. it's going to become a different ball game altogether. Absolutely. And this is why I'm saying, will Russia use the hammer, a big hammer? Yeah. I think they need to. Otherwise, you are not going to make this clear to the West. They're going to be pushing. Well, you, if if Russia uses the hammer, okay, like let's say that they do. Hypothet yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically. And and interestingly enough, you know, all of us got the alerts on our phones and all of that yesterday oh, oh, yeah. at the at, on the same at the same time, basically, that Russia was doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Which is coincidental timing. I yeah. it's, it does not seem like it no. is coincidental no, to me. Not. You can't pick basically the exact same day and do the same, same. Yeah. like universal warning and have that be a coincidence. OK. Yeah. So there's. There's that, but let's say they do use the hammer. Can uh -huh. you imagine any world where the U.S. and NATO don't retaliate in a very severe way? Yeah, but do I surprise you? Sure. They might not. Okay. I'm, they might I'm, not I'm because interested. you know why. Yeah. Because they know Russia's nuclear capabilities right. far outweigh ours. That's why I don't think this is not about, you know, they know what the out they NATO and the West and yeah. they know what's going to happen. Unless we start seeing the cities, San Francisco, New York, DC, Houston, Phoenix, yeah. Miami, all of them is seeing them yeah. because Russia has the capability of targeting those cities yes. from over there. That's why even if Russia uses a hammer, yeah. I don't think so the West will react forcibly what they're gonna do what they're gonna do uh, so yeah it's, do it it's, right back i mean it, yes they could i'm and, not and, saying and, they and explode the world basically well but 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 we all know yes it will be the end that's yeah. that's a horrible thing to even uh, contemplate but the fact that russia is not yeah pushing back hard that's sometimes what happened with the bullying what do you do right what do you do you're going to have to push back at some point. You can right. be patient to a degree, but at some point you say enough is enough. Right. So, and you already thought out of the consequences and you made the clear decisions that, yeah, I'll deal with those consequences, yeah. but I will put an end to this. This is Ooh. where I see that. Yeah, because you get now the Brits. Right. Their new secretary of defense stating, oh, we're going to send troops to Ukraine right. for training. As a matter of fact, they already... The, the incompetent Prime Minister Sunak pushed mm -hmm. back it, retracted the statement. Yeah. It tells you right there inside the governments, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand. Yeah. And this is why something like this with the buildup of the military, it's been talked about way back. And when time came, which is now, present the narrative to right. President Comedian Zelensky right. for him to announce it because it makes more sense the announcement will come from him, not from biden or some other western leader right the big concern as i said the security concern we're talking about not only regional but global one what is going to lead to that yeah. is where at least for me where my concern me too all this while this happening china is watching yeah why is it why is it why is china watching because china has reached out to south korea and japan for a summit mm -hmm. later on it's going to be for the leaders I think, as, an, as a geopolitical analyst, I think that China wants almost to do two things at the same time. Give a warning to Japan and South Korea. Yeah. But also wants to give another chance, maybe the last chance to diplomacy. Yeah. To reach that. You know, because personally for me, given the history of Japan and South Korea, but mainly Japan, we put the big question mark. Right. Can they be trusted? Well, no, and that's that's a fantastic yeah. question. Yeah, it's because the facts on the ground suggest otherwise as to why, in the case of both South Korea and Japan, would not be able to yeah. say no to the U.S. So I'm becoming to think, what was the purpose of China's reaching out to them for this? Uh, they're going to be meeting soon yeah. as far as the, the on the ministerial level, then set up the... the uh, and South Korea already announced that, oh, it's because we want to lower or uh, uh, sort of uh, ensure that China shouldn't have any security concerns. Right. Duh. 
Uh, that's like an yeah, that, that's that, like an insult. That's a huge insult. Yeah. In that's a diplomatic a world, that's a yeah. that's an insult. When you South Korea allowing a nuclear U.S. submarine to be there, yeah, no. But yeah, who's that for? Yeah, and there is a third element, by the way. Mm -hmm. As an analyst, I had to think about this third element. You know what third yeah. element has to do with North Korea? The concerns that if K in case U.S. attack North Korea, which will never happen yeah. because we know what the retaliation of North Korea is going to be, yeah. and North Koreans do not bluff. China had to think about the refugee issues because they share a border. Yeah, that's to me why uh, China is thinking rationally. That's in terms interesting. Of, yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, but when you take this on one end, then you take the announcements of the industrial in Ukraine yeah. on another end, and you see oh, on both yeah. ends of the spectrums, something doesn't add up here. Yeah. And China will have to think in those terms because the next thing that could be, they could be they, NATO and Western militaries, uh, inter military entities, yeah. uh, could be saying the same thing. How about if we do that in Taiwan? Right. And and China's been paying attention to this this entire time. And I think something is going on here. Yeah. Something is going on. Yeah. And I this is more of a somber episode, guys. Like, you know, normally it's reality. Really, really it's reality. Animated. Yeah. But, but it's a reality here. We can't. Right. Yeah. We but can't. this is more somber. It is somber and it is concerning. But if we don't address it. Right. How are our viewers going to understand the no? How right. would you know? given that the mainstream media is exactly. not even talking in detail as to They're what not. what entails with this establishment of uh, in, uh, military industrialization in Kiev. Right. What does it mean? And and all the defense contractors that came. So we have a couple of details about it. Yeah. So let me share really quickly Zelensky's post about it because it gives um, you know, it gives you guys a, a concrete, you know, this is this is real, this is happening. All right, let me see. Here it is. All right, so he and like I said, this this is maybe one of the biggest. And there's there's official pictures from it. Can you guys see that? There we go. Yeah, check that out. I mean, there's official pictures from this event. And look at this. Look at this packed room. There's standing room only in the back over here. Look at that. Yeah. This profiteering from this was Absolutely. the same case that was made in Afghanistan. Yep. You know, I was there. I saw, I, and literally the first time I won a couple times back and forth. Yeah. My first time there in 2002, I made the argument this is not a winnable. Yeah. So the difference is you were fighting against the with thing I cannot yeah. say, right? Yeah, uh, but even but even with say, that, right? but even with that, we were the one funding them and training them and all right. that stuff. So the reason wasn't about all that. It was about creating an environment where exactly. the profit will be maximized. Exactly. But the 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 enemy, yeah. the enemy was much smaller. The enemy was much less powerful. The yeah. enemy didn't have a larger nuclear arsenal than we did. Yeah, Do you but know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but also the enemy was perceived. The, right. Yeah, it right. wasn't a real enemy. It was perceived. Well, in yeah. a sense, is that also happening here? Yeah. Because, um, you know, what we're going to talk about on Rumble a little bit later, you know, is the enemy real or perceived in this yeah. in this circumstance? Yeah. Because if what you have is, you know, like imagine, imagine, you know, Russia and China basically starting to build weapons up along the Mexican border, uh, right? <laughs> like if, if they brought uh, all of their defense contractors over to Mexico to put the to put weapons manufacturing on the Mexican border yeah. to fight with us, yeah. what would we do? And I think that's the question that isn't really being asked yes, very much yeah. right now is, you know, to to what extent to what extent is this a really bad idea? Yeah. So let me share with you guys a couple of the contractors that we know. So according to what we know so far, 13 defense companies have already signed declarations uh, with Zelensky. So that's 
that's pretty huge. So we already have 13. Um, there were, I think it was 250 people from the defense industry Industry, overall. Uh, and this is not just defense from the United States. No, no, no. It will be a Western entities, Western entities, EU entities. Uh, France apparently was one of the biggest proponents of, um, what, what did they call it? I think it was co-production. Uh, so France is France, uh, 20 business leaders came with the Minister of Armed Forces, mm. Se- Sébastien Lacornu, to Kiev representing, and, and there were representatives from over 250 companies across Europe, US, and Asia that were there. So some of the ones that we know of, um, there are, let me see if I can find the names of these companies. Okay, so two European defense contractors have already said they're in. Um, I apologize if I pronounce this wrong, but Rheinmetall, which is German yeah. arms, yeah, uh, said that they would work with Ukraine's state arms company, Ukroborprom, I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly too, to build tanks and armored vehicles. Um, British-based BAE also announced that it's opening an office in Kyiv and looking to make 150 millimeter guns in Ukraine. Yeah. So we're we are already getting some names. We already know that BlackRock, uh, BlackRock had they actually went into got a lot of heat when they basically got the contracts to help rebuild. I also want to point out. That yeah. all 250 companies sent their Our representatives yeah. to Kiev. They well, didn't in, meet somewhere yeah, else. In, in, in Kiev, uh, when they meet, they met, the, the decision has already been made. And and here's yeah. the thing: why they didn't meet? Why they did? Why they didn't meet in Brussels at NATO headquarters? Right. That's just because optics also matters. So Absolutely. the decision to do it in Kiev instead of Brussels, signals also the big concern from the president, comedian Zelensky. Because here's the thing, you know, the eastern side of Ukraine is gone. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yeah. That just, that's, you can look at any map, gone. absolutely. Yeah. Even if Russia had the intentions of taking over, they would have targeted uh, Kiev. And, and yeah. take, but that wasn't, all, that wasn't the intention. That's was the, the thing. Yeah, it was never about that. Yeah. You know, despite what you hear, the arguments from some, even some analysts in Western, or it's because Russia wants to uh, uh, reinstate the Russian empire or, no, yeah. that's nonsense. Russia doesn't have the manpower to do that, Yeah, to go back to what it was. It would never be because the world has changed. Right. So, but you put this within the context also of what is taking place in the region. And two countries that comes to mind, Slovakia and Poland. Yeah. Poland is because Poland agreed to take a loan from the U.S. for $2 billion, $2 billion for weapons. Yeah. Slovakia, because they just had parliament elections mm-hmm. and the far right won the majority and far right tends to be pro-Russians. Yeah. So, because right this announcement of this came right after Slovakia's or Slovenia, if I'm, I always get them mixed <laughs> up. <laughs> so one of those countries. Uh, it's because they're saying we're done with supporting Ukraine. Yeah. You know. And, and the push is going to be from the West. This is another one because they seeing the day NATO and the West seeing the support is waning down yeah. completely. Yeah, absolutely. But for us in the US, you still have some clueless uh, citizens here that, oh, we're going to have to support Ukraine. They don't even understand what the issue is, right. let alone don't realize how much food prices have doubled within the last eight months. They don't realize that inflation where it is. They don't understand that uh, we are doing all this on a credit card, basically. Right, right. And at the time of this recording, there is a conversation inside Congress about a delegation wants to go to China to ask China to lift its restrictions on the chip industry. How insane. <laughs> Without really offering anything in return. Because... Well, not only that, you insult a country and you expect it to be friendly to you. Yeah. That just doesn't make sense. That's like stupidity. Tell me, I'll cut you off. We're done. Yeah. You know, you insult me and you expect me to have a conversation with you. No, no, we're done. 
and uh, but also because those politicians from Congress being pressured by their lobbyists right. who are the representatives of the Industry. Well, it's bad for the U.S. economy also. So, yeah. you know, there there was a big there was a big, uh, you know, decoupling push uh, because that's that's good optics. Right. Yeah. For any politician to be like, well, we're going to decouple from China without. And this is part of what bothers me the most about mm. politicians is because they make blanket statements like that, like, oh, we're going to decouple. Oh, you know, we'll, <laughs> you know, Russia, China, about whatever it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are they doing bad things like spying on us? Probably yes. Oh, yeah. Are we also spying on them? Also yes. Yeah. So this is, you know, it's a way more complicated situation than just saying, oh, well, we're going to decouple from China. Yeah. This is, you know, the 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 chip manufacturer. We're just we're going to put sanctions on them. We're going to ban all these things. It's way more complicated than that. Yeah. And and the the American public more or less falls for these big headlines and falls for the politician that says, well, we're going to ban, you know, Chinese investment. Uh, okay. Okay. Great. But mm. do, when, you understand do you what the under, impact right. long term? Do you un yeah. and and uh, the policies over the last few yeah. years have been very short sighted in that way, where it's like we're just going to get the hit of oh we're going to support this or we're going to ban this without looking at the long term impacts. No. And so right now, you know, we, we're looking at what's going on in Congress recently, and in a sense, it's it's funny. Right. In a sense, this looks like drama just kind of playing itself out. Yeah. In a sense, it's not funny, though. In a sense, it's actually it's actually it, it's a sad reflection a, of reality yeah. when you have a corrupted senator. Yeah. And refusing to resign. That tells you how corrupted our system is. Right. You know, get put him, give him a fair trial, him right. or her. You know, I am for the law. You give fair trial. But right. you know when they're gonna open up the trial for this guy? This guy Never. is uh, is Senator Menendez, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. top de yeah. uh, Democrats and senator. You know when they're gonna do that? They're gonna do that in May. Yeah. You know. Or Wh never. Yeah, well, they will. But the question is, why? Right. Why till May? You start the trial tomorrow because it's taxpayers' money that has been spent. Right. And if he found guilty, you put his ass in jail. Right. For a long time, you confiscate whatever he took. Yeah. You don't conf confiscate all his assets. Yeah. You confiscate whatever he took that didn't belong to him right. and send a message or use him as a lesson for the rest. But we right. don't have that. You look at the the, well, the, the Senator Feinstein that died, what yeah. she left behind, a right. $62 million plane, yeah. over $100 million in assets on a $180,000 salary? Yeah. Exactly. How the heck? Exactly. How You're the absolutely heck? right. Yeah. We don't have accountability in our system. We do not. Did you know? And again, I am not uh, saying, I'm just saying the examples. Yeah. Do you know that the head of Evergreen, Evergrande, Evergrande in, yeah, you know China. what he is now? His ass in jail. Yes. Yeah. It's because he was put on house arrest. Right. I found that. Was put on house arrest. It's because China also government has to send a message. You know. Oh, yeah. Why are we doing that? Right. Why aren't we doing that with the court? Now, they didn't say he got involved in corruption, whatever. First of all, they need to figure out how did he end up acquiring all that debt. Right. Because it's reflected on the country and the citizens that have lost their investment. They lost, yeah, yeah. They lost everything. So yeah. now it's going to be in jail. It's going to be trial. Right. And if it is, I'm sure he will be put in jail for quite a while or maybe yeah. even executed. I don't, you know, sometimes why not? Yeah. You know, let's let's go. You know, it's not I'm a heartless guy, but fair fairness matters. Well, and also, fairness matters. You're absolutely right. And also, you know, there there really is no incentive. You're absolutely right. There really is no incentive yeah. for for companies, more or less, the leaders of these companies here in the U.S. to oh, be no. held accountable. No. And you know, I so I want to bring up actually in this case it, because what yeah. we're talking about is basically, um, you know, as we're watching support on the public level start to go away what's starting to happen is yeah. the support on the private level and so oh, now yeah, that's a good point. especially as you're having you know these defense contractors building weapons in ukraine right yeah. so so france called it i think co-production yeah. and so as you're looking at co-production that is a way to send money to that country Final, without yeah. directly sending yeah. money to that country yeah. from the governmental yeah. level 
and from the from the population level the population doesn't necessarily have to support it yeah. if co-production is happening there then there there are people who are paying for it one way or the one way or another because the defense budget here in the united states people don't know where it goes and there are large so pentagon i think failed what five audits yeah. in a row they failed their last one because there's there's trillions of dollars missing. We don't know where uh -huh. it goes. And so we don't have any accountability, even for, for defense contractor spending. Uh -huh. And so what we're really looking at here, and, and it's interesting because all of a sudden you are also hearing a combined narrative. You're hearing, well, all, also all these European nations are saying, yeah. we gave our stockpile. We don't have anything left. We have to work on rebuilding our stockpile because of how much we gave to Ukraine. So we can't give any more of ours to Ukraine. We have to build more yeah. and new. And the thing is, the problem, there, there, there is one major hurdle that's going to be yeah. faced, is that uh, Ukraine doesn't have any infrastructure left. So uh, okay. if we are, this is why this is nothing. It's not a hype. I'm not saying it's a hype. It's yeah. not. It just for it to enter into production, you're looking at about years and years from now. It's it's that's a it's, great point it's, uh, because the infrastructure is not there. Yeah. You know that was the same arguments that was made, for example, in tech companies like yeah. Apple when it removed some of its operations from China to India. Yeah, they realized that India does not have the, the infrastructure, necessary infrastructure yeah. for that, and they end up having to leave. Yeah. In the case of weapons here, uh, weapons again. Are you going to be manufacturing uh, uh, five, five, six, or yeah. or nine mil uh, the ammo for nine millimeters for for you know Glock, whatever, or are you going to be developing or manufacturing some high precision guided right. missile stuff, which right. requires a lot of technology, requires a very specific infrastructure. There's yeah. nothing in Ukraine. I mean, uh, let alone <laughs> in a country that claimed to be dem democratic when. The comedian President Zelensky yeah. himself banning all opposition parties. Yeah, he's not even going to allow elections. Yeah. Did you know? This is a side note. I got a word yesterday. Uh -huh. His wife spent one million dollar in L.A. from Cartier. Oh, wow! I got a word yesterday. Wow. One million dollar on Cartier. You got Cartier, the jewelry yeah, stuff, the jewelry you know, stuff. high high end, whatever. Yeah, one million. Wow. So that's wait. and the thing is, yeah. why is Western media not covering that? Why do we not know where Zelensky's wife is spending a million dollars? Okay. Yeah. Why? So. Why do we not know this? It shows you how uh, all this is gonna be like this uh, rebuilding or converting. Uh, right. uh, Ukraine, uh, this ravaged war country, into sort of a manufacturer, domestic yeah. weapon manufacturer. No, it ain't gonna work. Well, that gonna... that to me is it, okay. So first of all, I want to point to something you just yeah. talked about because you and I have been talking from the very beginning about this being a long war, war. Yeah. not a short war. Because yeah. remember, remember at the beginning. Where they said, "Oh, this is just going to be a little while. It's going to be a couple months. It's going to be fine." Same thing we said about Iraq. Same, yes. I was told. I was told. Oh, it's going to be a quick walk. Quick we walk. We go yep. liberate Baghdad and get yep. out. Yeah. I see you go in. You're not coming out till 15, 20 years from now. And it's exactly, and it exactly yeah, it's exactly what happened. Speaking of Iraq, while I'm yeah. thinking about it. Did you know their central bank decides now, as of January 2024, mm -hmm. no more withdrawals in U.S. dollar? Wow, <laughs> it's it's coming. Yeah. And I know, I know, you know, we hear, I hear this argument actually all the time that there's absolutely no way the U.S. dollar is going to be totally fine. It's totally okay if we print as much money as possible yeah. because it doesn't, you know. And I was like, man, right now yeah. it's not yeah. a problem. Okay, right it's now true. it's not a problem because it's little. So the, this, gets, this is like a little move, yeah. but little move and little move and little move and little move eventually turns out into yeah, a really yeah. big one. Now, there is one key issue, which to me, I will put, uh, uh, I, I will focus on it from a regional security. Mm -hmm. And this one has to do with the uh, 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 Eastern countries. You look at, for example, with the demonstrations that just took place in, in Prague. Yeah. 
And you look at also, even in Germany, which we don't hear, there are certain places in Germany that they are resisting the government yeah. approach to that. Uh, Poland, Poland is hard to tell at this point because the upcoming elections, which will be soon, yeah. will define or determine the direction of uh, so far based on, and even with the conversation we had with Mike, yeah. which was very, very insightful. I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch that video. Uh, speaking of Mike, we're going to have him back with Scott Ritter. Oh, that's, no, I'm going to work Yeah, yeah, out. that's going to be really would great. Would you like, would you guys be interested in having uh, or listening or be part mm -hmm. of a conversation between uh, uh, Mike, uh, Scott, and myself? And if you know, yeah. wants to come in on this, yeah. Just leave us the answer on the chat box. We'll we'll greatly well, appreciate. Well, and anybody else you would like to see us have as guests? Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna st because I think what's important is having the conversation. Agreed. And I think the con in the conversation you get to be exposed to different ideas, mm -hmm. and sometimes on those I through those ideas you can see solutions to problems. Absolutely. So if you are only focusing on one set of narrative, mm -hmm. then you are limiting your options Absolutely. intellectual one that is as far as oh i only can see it this way yeah because you've never been exposed to others so so we'll be reaching out to mike and and uh, scott together and, and have them down here so so back to my point about mm -hmm. eastern europe or from a regional security aspect you'll start to see probably countries eastern europeans yeah pushing slightly back you now you see with this slovakia i believe then of course in hungary they're pushing back you get now Czech Republic, right. but also all this doesn't happen in a vacuum either. Right. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because NATO is already fueling tensions between Serbia and Kosovo. Yeah. And if you all guys know the history of that, it was NATO that provoked all the tensions back in 1999, which created start on that bombing mm -hmm. Serbian locations. Uh, that's why I tip my hat to uh, the tennis player. Uh, Novak Djokovic. I, for Serbian. many reasons, I absolutely. One challenged the COVID mm -hmm. narrative. Uh, even Australia turned him down, didn't allow him to get in yeah. to uh, to play. U.S. didn't allow him to get in, mm -hmm. and he and you know who was watching when he won the last one? None other than Evil Bill uh. was watching there. You could see the look. You uh. know? So I tip my hat to Novak. Instead of he's uh, a hero now. The other Absolutely. two, Nadal and Roger, yeah. they are so weak. Yeah, yeah, they are good tennis players, but they are weak, character-wise, mm -hmm. because they couldn't extend when it matters. You can always judge a man's character mm -hmm. is by taking stand when it matters. Absolutely. That's that's the bottom line to it. Absolutely. Regardless of wealth, regardless of status, regardless of whatever. Yeah. It's when one takes stands when it matters. Yeah, and Novak did. Yeah, I absolutely. And, uh, he absolutely he's from did. Serbia, so yep. you know, he just took uh, a journalist and showed him the bunker where he was hiding with his family when the wow. bombing from NATO. Well, now NATO is fueling the tensions again, because Serbia is on Russia's side. Kosovo is the creation of NATO. Yeah, because it was declared independently after I think the UN resolution twelve forty six, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I was familiar with that stuff because. I was in not involved, but I was in the military at the time, mm -hmm. getting in, and we were aware of what was going on in Pristina and and, and Kosovo and all. Yeah. Stuff, so. Well, and that's sort of long forgotten right now. Oh yeah. If people ever knew that it happened. Yeah. yeah. Let alone the uh, the mistake that the NATO made when it bombed the embassy, not the embassy, mm -hmm. the residential, I think, on the office of China's embassy. Oh, yeah, a, sorry, it was a mistake. A, it, was, it wasn't a mistake. Yeah, because, bad call, bad uh, yeah, call. Missiles don't get launched by themselves. You yeah. have to put in the coordinates. No way. Yeah. No way. Didn't yeah, you? It was no AI at oh, that time. Okay, so. it was not AI at yeah. all. So this is my point in all this. So you yeah. put this in perspective as far as now the call for the establishments of uh, uh, the production of weapons in, in, in Kiev or yeah. in Ukraine. Well, in Kiev is going to be, it can be anywhere else because this is if it happens, as I said, no infrastructure, nothing. Then you take into consideration also the changes on the ground, yeah. politically speaking, or geopolitically, that is, with what's going on. As I said, Slovakia, Poland, uh, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, yeah. uh, now uh, in, in Serbia, all this sends a message to, even in France, 
you get now. And you know why the reason France went in with that delegations? Yeah. Because being kicked out of uh, Niger, yeah. being kicked out of Niger deprived now France from yeah. a lot of resources. Yeah. It's uh, as frankly. a matter of fact, the whole Europe. Yep. I uh well, we can share it with our viewers. We, mm -hmm. We've been reached out by a company to do analysis for mm -hmm. about uranium. Yeah. And, and we did prepare an analysis, which we will release for you guys soon, just for you to. Mm -hmm. And I, we, we tackle those kind of issues yeah. because this is now, it's not just France, it's, right. your, it's Europe. Right. Especially when it comes down to access to uranium. Yeah. Even the US, we depend on Kazakhstan, Russia, Australia, and Canada. And even Namibia, mm -hmm. based on the research that I did, that just shows you for us to have the light on. Yeah. If we don't have access to the uranium from overseas, we toast. Yeah. So that just shows you the changes France did this because now it has to find some other alternative to keep the machinery. Absolutely. Of, uh, imperialism going and all that. Well, and that's that's actually a really that's a very important thing that you just said yeah. because, in a sense, is this not also imperialism? Yeah, in a subtle in way. A, in, in a subtle, subtle way. way. It's, yeah. a, it's not the overt yeah. imperialism. But right now, instead of hiding the fact that all of these companies were benefiting from this situation, yeah. right now that's kind of out in the open. Yeah, and you will think the investments will be much better in peace than it is. But peace doesn't bring money. Peace but doesn't can you pay. imagine all this money be put into cooperation? into yes. building countries into creating prosperity for local residents of whatever country that is yeah you know that was the whole reason for why you see now anytime you see a split in the international system you always have to ensure or not ensure rather but you always have to think in terms of what's going to be going parallel with that right. you you get them like this parallel but there is another line and yeah. you know what that line is conflicts yep we will go Absolutely. parallel with that new order so, absolutely so um let's we have a we have a super sticker would you like to oh you go for it, it. read it you okay go for so it. thank you tony in for your super sticker oh let me and, see if um, tony that i know yeah um, tony i think you're yeah, also a member of our, of our oh tony yeah. yes tony in thank you tony because Very tony much. tony always writes a lot of comments i read his yeah they're knowledgeable very knowledgeable thank you tony for really Very much. sharing the knowledge because that's the reason why I read the, the feedbacks. Yeah. It's really insightful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean it. I mean it. Oh, guys, David reads all of the comments. So uh, whether <laughs> whether whether he responds or not, he reads them all. And I think we'd like to bring back Q&As. What do you think about that, why David? Not? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I like to have a part of the community be part of the conversation yeah. as well. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we were thinking about doing the exclusive, but that's separate. Yeah. That's for the channel members and all that. But sometimes on on this live stream, yeah, it would be nice to open. Would you? Up. Yeah, would you guys, would you guys like, like to it? have Q and A's yeah. again? Just type in the answer on the on the chat box. Just yes or no. All right, David, are you ready to head over to Rumble? Yes, yes, I am. So, well, we guys hope you find this very informative, and please join us on Rumble. We're gonna be there within the next, I think, 10, 15 yeah. minutes. So we got a very very interesting topic. To talk about this because we can talk freely. Yeah, I can't wait, especially with what took place yesterday in the United States. Yeah, I, I'm I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to head over to yeah. Rumble and talk about so, this a little bit more. Well, we look forward to seeing you there, guys. But as always, prepare yourself for changing world order. Till next time. Bye bye.